What's up, Yins, guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I'm going to continue on with my lake breakdown series, and we're going to talk about Lake Wallenpopik. Now, Lake Wallenpopik can be found between Pike and Wayne counties in northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, Lake Wallenpopik is actually owned and operated as an auxiliary electric power generation facility. Now, Lake Wallenpopik is about 5,700 acres with a max depth of 50 feet. In addition to that, it's roughly 13 miles long. Lake Wallenpopik is an impoundment of Wallenpopik Creek, and that was completed and finished in 1926. Wallenpopik's major tributaries are actually Klein Hens, Ariel, Purdy, and Swan Creeks, as well as Mill and Spinner Brooks. Now the water in Wallenpopik is moderately fertile, and what you guys are typically gonna see is anywhere from clear to a light bluish green tint on the water. In addition to that, Wallenpopik is gonna have a moderate algae bloom. Now as many of the lakes have in the state of Pennsylvania, Wallenpopik also has a thermocline. Now that thermocline is gonna go from June to September and it's gonna sit between 20 and 40 feet of water. Now the bottom at Lake Wallenpopik, it's gonna be a firm hard bottom. And that's gonna consist of mostly sand and gravel or rock and boulders and in most areas, especially back in the coves, you're gonna see silt. Now, as always, as many of my lake breakdown videos include, creek channels and submerged creek channels, whether they're old or new, are gonna be key structural elements when you guys are talking about fishing Lake Wall and Popic. Now, we typically talk about key structural elements, and one of those key structural elements to a lake is the cover that's available in that lake. Now, Wall and Popic has some really good weed structure up and down the entire lake. What you guys are gonna find most of the time is basically patches of milfoil or that curly leaf pond weed. Now those are gonna be the primary types of weed structure and you're gonna find those deep weed lines anywhere from eight to 15 feet of water. Now one really awesome feature about Lake Wall and Popic is before the lake went in, they actually clear cut a lot of the trees in that particular area. Well, they left those trees lay. So what you guys are gonna find in Lake Wall and Popic is there's several areas that hold submerged timber. And submerged timber being whole trees or stumps or just major brush piles in specific parts of the lake. And what that's gonna create, it's gonna create a submerged timber field. So anytime you guys can see a submerged timber field on a lake, that's going to be a key structural element that's gonna to continue to hold fish throughout multiple times of the year. So we talk about breaking down a lake like Lake Wall and Popic. Another important topic to cover is the primary forage. Now the primary forage in Lake Wall and Popic is gonna be the all-wife population. In addition to the all-wife population, another primary forage is gonna be those small panfish. So anytime we talk about a small panfish, we're talking about a small bluegill or a small perch and also golden shiners. And golden shiners are prevalent in Lake Wall and Popic. In addition to that, for you smallmouth lovers, there's a very healthy population of crayfish up and down Lake Wall and Popic. So the crayfish is gonna be another primary forage for game fish like smallmouth and largemouth bass. In addition to that, some perch will actually eat crayfish as well. So it's a good natural forage that's gonna help you guys imitate that with your baits and kind of understand what lives in there so you can match the hatch and catch more fish. So what kind of fish live in Lake Wall and Popic? Well, the primary game fish is gonna really be the striped and hybrid bass. We're also gonna have a really healthy smallmouth bass population, as well as a very healthy walleye population. And in addition to that, for you trout fishermen, Lake Wall and Popic has a premier brown trout fishery. Now, other game fish that are in Lake Wall and Popic consist of largemouth bass, chain pickerel, muskie, perch, rock bass, bluegill, black crappie, and the channel catfish. Now, when I talk about Lake Wall and Popic being a premier striper or hybrid bass lake, it, it is really the case. And really, if you guys go out and look at the biology reports, statistically speaking, we have seen fish anywhere from 24 to 28 inches caught there regularly. And some of those hybrid bass have really got up over 30 pounds. So we're talking about trophy class hybrid and striped bass. In addition to that, the smallmouth population is also very healthy, as I mentioned before, and you're really gonna average anywhere from 15 
to 18 inches per smallmouth bass. And three to four pounders are caught regularly out of this lake. Now, one interesting fact about Lake Wallenpapik, it's actually a brood stocking lake for walleyes. So what that means is it has a healthy walleye population and some of those fingerlings are actually taken out and stocked in other lakes. Now, the stocking effort kind of supplements that in Lake Wallenpapik, but it's really nice because you guys are going to see an average of 22 to 26 inches on that walleye species as the norm. So again, it's a good solid walleye lake up and down the entire 13 miles of shoreline. Now lastly, again, for you trout fishermen, Lake Wallenpapik holds some very, very big brown trout. And the brown trout is not like other species of trout. The brown trout can actually thrive in different water temperature ranges. So that kind of makes this a perfect fit for this particular lake. Now with these tributaries that kind of come in and out of Lake Wallenpapik, it's gonna give those brown trout a naturally reproducing area. So again, all of these elements that come together for this lake really kind of produces a prime fishery and a really prime habitat for a fish like a brown trout. Now as a standard, the typical length of a brown trout in Lake Wallenpapik is between 20 and 24 inches. However, the previous state record was caught out of Lake Wallenpapik at 17 pounds and four ounces. So go out there, take a look at what the new state record is, and that'll give you guys an idea of how large these brown trout can grow in a water like Wallenpapik. All right, guys, it's always my goal to give you some background on a lake before we actually take a look at the map. So hopefully you guys found that information to be beneficial. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to jump in to my markup of the map, take a look at some key elements, some key structure points, as well as talk about a few hot spots that I found through my research that will help you guys locate and catch more fish. All right, guys, let's go ahead and zoom in to Lake Wallenpapik. Now, as we're zooming in, I'll give you my disclaimer. First and foremost, we have a tremendous amount of information to get through. I have a lot of marks on this particular map. In addition to that, my marks aren't going to be 100% accurate based off of latitude and longitude. These are simply reference points for you guys so that you guys can locate some of these areas when you're out there fishing. First and foremost, we're gonna start south and we're gonna work our way east and then north. So as we zoom into the map here, you guys are gonna see right off the bat, Wallenpapik Creek. Now Wallenpapik Creek will actually flow directly into the lake here. And first and foremost, the yellow line is gonna indicate where that creek channel runs throughout the entire body of the lake. So starting here, Right off the bat, you guys are going to see Ledgedale Boat Launch and Marina. Now, what you should note here is there's actually some boat docks. So once you get out of Wallenpapik Creek, you're going to see the bridge in the road. And right to the right of it, you're going to see these boat docks. Now, according to Fishity, this is a striped bass hotspot. And I can see that being the case because we have some good submerged weeds here. In addition, you're going to see 5 to 15 feet of water. So this is our first area. Now, as we work here, you're going to see the channel and you're going to see these submerged weeds that are going to run kind of south and along the southern shoreline. Now, as we continue to work down, note the channel where it's at. You're going to run into 15 feet of water. Now, as we work up here, you guys are eventually going to hit 25 feet of water in the channel. And now we see this purple line and that purple line is going to indicate a submerged roadbed. And as we've discussed in the past, a submerged roadbed equals a transition line. So it's a good structure point when you're out there doing some fishing. So as we kind of work here, you can see 25 on the channel. I have an ice fishing hotspot. Now, again, according to Fishity, multiple people have caught fish off of this location. So note that if you guys are out there doing some ice fishing. Now, working a little bit north, this particular cove here, you're going to see Ariel Creek, and this is where Ariel Creek runs into the lake. Anytime you have an outflow, it's a good area to focus on. And this particular cove has a good portion of submerged weeds all up and down that arm. Now, as we move a little bit east here, you're going to see eventually 35 feet of water and the channel is going to wrap around the lake. Again, the submerged roadbed is going to kind of come out and jet out into the lake. Now, five mile point marina, you have some good marina structure. You have boat docks there. In all in and around those boat docks, you're going to see submerged weed beds. Again, focus on the weed edges. These particular areas hold fish. 
Now again, pickerel hot spot here. There's some good submerged weeds. According to Fishity, lots of people have caught pickerel off of this particular area. Now as we're moving south, note the channel in the middle of the lake. And again, we have a submerged roadbed on the left. That's going to be a good transition line that will eventually run right into a solid weed bed. Now you have 35 feet of water in the middle and on the bottom section of the lake here, you're going to see the weed beds run all the way around Cairns Island. Now five feet of water up against the island, 15 back in this cove. This is another good fishing hotspot because you have the island and you have the weeds coming down along the shoreline. Notice that that submerged road bed actually runs across the channel. So this particular area is going to be really awesome to do some fishing. So I'm just going to mark this fishing hotspot. So that particular area you want to focus on. Now again, south you got the submerged weeds around the island and north you have submerged weeds all along this particular shoreline. Now as we work down the lake, again submerged weeds all along the shoreline and that shoreline is going to run anywhere from 1 to 5 to 15 feet of water. Eventually that 15 will drop off in this 25 which is why I have that marked. Now working around here, again, the northern shoreline, you're going to see a lot of good submerged weed vegetation and 25 feet of water in the middle. Now at this point, this is a key structural element for you guys. PA Boat and Fish has so kindly dropped 30 plus junior porcupine cribs on both sides of the lake here. These porcupine cribs are put in there to increase fish habitat. So, Next time you guys are out in the water and you find these, be sure to remember that PA Fish and Boat do a tremendous amount of work to increase the habitat for this fishery. They do this on a lot of lakes across Pennsylvania, and these particular porcupine cribs are going to serve as good fish structure. It's a safe haven for the fish to go and live and also ambush prey. So note these porcupine cribs are going to be critical for you when you're out there on the water. Now as we work east here, you're going to see submerged weeds all along the shoreline. And again, 5 to 15 feet of water, north and south. Eventually we're going to hit Iron Point Boat Launch and Marina. Again, good dock structure. As we work south here, you're going to see 25 feet of water that drops into 15 and eventually into 5. Now the back end of this cove, absolutely fantastic. It's got really good submerged weed growth. Again, these areas hold fish, so note that. As we work north, we go to the mouth of this particular cove. Again, the purple line is going to serve for a submerged road bed. So there's your transition line. To the middle, you got 35 feet of water where the channel runs, and you got 15 down to 5 up along the shoreline. Now, Burns Island, this is also a good area for you guys to do some fishing. However, there's a permanent hazard there, so be careful when you're on the lake. Now as we work east, notice the submerged road bed kind of jets back north and you have submerged weed growth on the bottom and on the top. Now I marked this particular point a smallmouth hotspot because multiple smallmouth have been caught off of this particular point. So note the road bed as it kind of runs along the channel. The middle of the lake here is a very solid opportunity for you guys to get out there and do some deep water jigging. Now the bottom half here of this particular section of the lake. This is where Kleinhens Creek runs into the lake. So again, we have an outflow here coming in. We have good submerged weed structure on the outside of that. You have the marina right there, and you have 5 to 15 to 25 feet of water in this particular section of the lake. As we move north, you're going to see 30 feet of water in the channel, and eventually we're going to hit Kip Island. Now, Kip Island is another really awesome part of this lake, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Note that the roadbed kind of runs across here and you have a permanent hazard at the bottom. So as we zoom out a little bit, I want to talk about the left side of the lake. We got 15 feet to 5 feet again. PA Fish and Boat has also dropped 20 plus vertical plank structures in this section of this lake. So this cove right here is going to have some good wood structure for you guys to focus on when you're out there fishing. So around Kip Island, we're going to move to this section of the lake. And this is really important. I talked about this kind of at the beginning where we have a submerged timber field. So this was an area of Wall and Poppick that was clear cut and that timber was left and then eventually flooded. So you guys have a really golden opportunity here because there's going to be a lot of good submerged timber structure in there. 
Yes, it might be Snag City. However, there's opportunities for you guys to get in there and do some trolling with some deep crankbaits, get those baits down to where that timber is, and it will produce fish. Now we have another point north here that's also another really good smallmouth hotspot. Multiple fish have been caught there and fish in that three to four to five pound range have been caught there. So this is a good section of the lake. Moving south a little bit, uh, we have five to 15 feet of water. We have these dock structures at the bottom. And again, some really solid submerged weeds in this cove. As we move up slightly, you're gonna see Mill Brook. Now Mill Brook runs in here at the end of this, you're going to have five feet and then eventually 15 feet of water. Really good submerged weed vegetation along this particular point. So as we work north here, again, to the left, you're going to see submerged weeds all throughout that shoreline and you're going to see 30 to 35 feet of water where the channel's at. We have good weed structure here and now another really solid hot spot. Now, if you guys focus in right here, you have the channel coming across 35 feet of water and you also have this submerged road bed that runs right across the lake. Again, this is going to be a fishing hotspot. And the reason for that has to do with the creek channel running right across a submerged road bed. That's gonna be a key structural element that's gonna produce fish. Now, as we work north, notice a ton of submerged weeds here. And also, we're gonna see a walleye hotspot. Now, you have this particular point that jets out and right in this particular area, right off the channel, that's going to hold deep water walleyes. So let's, let's keep going here. We're going to just talk about to the right. We're going to talk about these submerged weeds. You have good weed structure that wrap around in this particular cove. And you got 5 to 15 to 25 feet of water. Now on the opposite side of the lake here, you're going to have another really solid section. This is where Purdy Creek actually runs into Lake Wallenpopik. Now in this particular cove, you guys are gonna see a lot of good submerged weed structure. You're gonna see five to 15 to 25 feet of water. Now again, be careful in here because there's a permanent hazard in this particular cove. As you work out, submerge weeds all along this point and into this other cove on the opposite side. So we're gonna work back across the lake and you're gonna notice the channel at 30 feet of water and eventually right here, it's gonna drop off into 40 feet. Now to the south, again, you have this particular point, you have really good weed structure here. And to the north, you're gonna see Swan Creek. That's where that runs into the lake. Now you also have Caffrey Boat Launch and Marina at the top here. So you're gonna have some good marina structure and some good dock structure in that area as well. Now as we work back, this is where the lake really opens up. Let's focus on the bottom here. You have some submerged weeds and then you also have Sheridan Brook running into the lake. Now this cove has really good weed structure. You got 40 to 35 to 30 feet of water out in the middle of the channel. You also have good submerged weeds along this point, and this is another striped bass hotspot. So outside of this point in this cove, this is gonna be another targeted area where multiple people have caught striped bass. Now as we work here, we're gonna to get to Epley Island. Now Epley Island is another one of those key structural elements to this lake. Not only do you have the island there, in a hot spot for walleye right off that island, but you guys also see another submerged timber field. So this particular area of the lake is critical when you're out there doing some fishing. Now the north end here where you have Spinner Brook coming in, you have good submerged weeds outside of that along this shoreline. You have Epley Island, you have Creek Channel coming across 40 feet, and you have submerged weeds all along the southern end of this point. Now, as we work north slightly, back into this particular cove, you have good submerged weed structure, and you also have 20 plus, actually 40 plus, junior porcupine cribs. Again, thank you, PA Boat and Fish. Improving fish habitat allows you guys to find structural elements that will help you catch more fish. In addition to that, it gives the fish a safe haven to go to and really structure to kind of relate to. Now, as we work down, you're gonna see five to 15 to 25 feet of water. That's gonna be the standard. Up against a shoreline, one to five, a little bit further out, 15, and then eventually you're gonna hit 25 feet of water. Now, notice south of the submerged timber field. Again, we have these weeds that kind of come around this point, come down into this cove. They're gonna run all along the right side of the lake on this shoreline. Now, another key structural element, again, submerged road bed, this purple line, this is gonna be a good structural element and transition line for you. 
Now notice the channel goes to 43 feet of water on this end of the lake. So we're getting a little deeper. As we move up, we're gonna see another submerged timber field here to the left. And we're also gonna see 20 plus junior porcupine cribs. Now we also have a black best nesting area right here. So you guys are gonna see the nesting structure in there and that's also gonna hold fish. Now as we work up, you're gonna see some additional junior porcupine cribs. You're gonna see some good submerged weed structure. You're gonna see Wilsonville boat launch and marina. So you have the docks there. Now the north end of the lake here, you're gonna see 20 plus junior porcupine cribs. You're gonna see the submerged road bed and you're gonna see Sealy Brook coming into this particular cove. Now, right outside of here on this point, it's a walleye hotspot. Multiple walleyes have been caught right off of this particular point. So as we jet back across past Wilsonville Boat Launch and Marina, we're kind of working towards the dam. Now, there's gonna be a really solid submerged weed bed that runs along the eastern shoreline here. So as we work north, notice the channel comes into the dam right here, and right outside the dam, you have these sections of submerged road bed. So, the submerged road bed comes in and crosses right in front of the dam. Notice right here, this is going to be another fishing hotspot. Again, the reason for that, the channel crosses the road bed and creates a really dynamic structure point. Now the north end here, PA Boat and Fish have also put in 100 plus rock rubble humps in this area and 20 plus stake trees. So again, awesome structure points for you guys to locate to produce fish. Now this back cove, five to 15 to 25 to 30 feet of water, and your deepest point's gonna be 50 feet of water at the dam. All right guys, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna kinda of jump into some tips and techniques that will be beneficial for you guys when you're out there fishing Lake Wall and Popic. All right guys, so we're gonna focus on Lake Wall and Popic species, and we're gonna talk about some tips and techniques to catch them. So we're gonna talk about that hybrid or striped bass, we're gonna talk about smallmouth bass, we're gonna talk about walleye, and we're also gonna talk about the brown trout that inhabit this particular lake. First and foremost, we're gonna start off with striper and hybrid bass. Now, stripers can be caught in spring between 40 and 45 degrees in roughly 20 to 25 feet of water, usually off of main lake points. We talk about main lake points. We talk about Schumann, Simmons, Ironwood, and near the dam. Vertical jigging spoons work very well on this particular body of water. Now into May and early June, you guys are gonna to wanna to look for stripers to follow the all wife. And they usually follow the all wife into five to 15 feet of water. And they usually do that from dusk until midnight. Now mid June to September, again, fish after dark. You guys are gonna to wanna to look for surface activity and then use your top water baits to produce those fish. We know that stripers move shallow at night. And really, that's where you're gonna to wanna to focus your effort on. Plus, that's gonna help you guys avoid daytime boat traffic. Now, in October and November, stripers can be found in that 10 to 20 feet of water range, again, off of main lake points. Stick baits and crankbaits casted or trolled will produce fish. Next, we wanna talk about Lake Wall and Poppick's smallmouth. Now, early season weed beds on gravel bottoms in about eight to 15 feet of water are gonna hold fish. Stroh's and Martin Coves, Ironwood Point, and Cairns Island are excellent places for you guys to start off. Now in summertime, you're gonna to wanna to focus on deep weed lines and deeper water. In the fall, those fish are gonna move shallow and they're gonna to move to those shallow weed lines. So anytime you guys find those healthy green weeds in the fall, that's where those smallmouth are gonna be located. Now I prefer spinner baits and rattle traps and typically crank baits. However, you guys are gonna be able to do some vertical jigging with tubes as well. Any bait that's gonna help you cover water is gonna be effective. Okay, Lake Wall and Poppick Walleye. May and June, troll stick baits in two to 10 feet of water at night. Look for slopes around Tafton, Calico, and Boulder Points. Also, check out the areas around Kip Island. Now in summer, walleyes move deeper with the bait fish. The walleye are gonna follow the all wife bait balls. So troll deep diving crankbaits in and around those bait fish balls. Now in the fall, you guys wanna go right back to the shallow water tactics and troll stick baits in two to 10 feet of water at night. Hit your points, find your gradual slopes, and you'll eventually run into a school of walleye. Lake Wall and Poppick brown trout, or in Western Pennsylvania, so affectionately called brown trout. Now brown trout can be taken in spring and fall in less than 25 feet of water. 
You guys are going to want to look at Calico and Sunset Points and Fern and Waltz and Martin Coves. During the day, troll spoons in 15 to 25 feet of water. From dusk to midnight, work stick baits and inline spinners. Troll the creek channel from Kip Island to Cairns Island using that deep spoon approach. All right, boys and girls. Well, hopefully I was able to provide some good solid information for you and really effectively break down Lake Wallenpopic in the state of Pennsylvania. My goal is to help you guys learn something new, not only about a specific lake, but the sport of fishing. Now, if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, please subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for your time today and thank you very much for watching. If there's something you guys want to see in particular, drop me a comment, let me know, and I'll do my best to get you a video on it. All right, guys, tight lines. See you next time. Herding cats while talking about fishing in PA with Ryan Reed.